for anyone that uses that software. I do have it installed. I do occasionally use Mudbox. If you do use Mudbox, uh, they've just released a server a, a hotfix for it, so it's a good idea to install that. I think it was only released a few days ago. Uh, 2017 that is. I'm not sure about 2016 or 15 version. It fixes a problem that they had. They call it a security fix. It some, fixes some problems that they were having with FBX models. So if you work with FBX it might be an idea to uh, install the hotfix for it. Remember to always rotate the texture to match the underlying model. Go to the edge there. Okay, and let's also throw that texture down along that edge through the middle there. Um, again, I'm just rotating my model so that my masking is taking effect. I don't want to be painting on it like that because I may accidentally overpaint the top. So just rotate it around so you see a masking taking effect. Break that down. Break that down. This is one long edge. This is the longest piece of the um, banister that we've worked on so far. And again, I'm not painting all the way to the bottom because I know that I'm only really worrying about the white part of the texture here, which you'll see in just a sec when I change the uh, layer style. So I'm not even worrying about painting to the bottom of the edge there. If you do accidentally overpaint like I just did there, uh, don't worry because it'll disappear when I change the layer style in just a second. Okay. Let's zoom out on our model here and jump into our layer styles and do an add. And we're just going to pull it back. Maybe like that. Let's throw on a new layer because remember a new texture, a new layer. Regardless of what software you're working in, I would advise you work that way because um, it's just easier than to remove it if you don't like what you've done. Let's grab a uh, texture we can use as a dark texture this time. So, so instead of painting on the white part, we want to paint on the black part. So I'm just looking for a texture that has an interesting black pattern. This one will work quite well. Let's throw that up, up along the top here, I think. Again, I'm going to anchor my model slightly and zoom in. Always working directly on though, front onto the model. I'm going to scale my texture back just a little bit. And uh, line it up. Um, now I'm going to decide if I want the dark to be at the top or at the bottom, and I think I want it at the bottom, so I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. Alright, now we're going to paint that in. And again, I'm only worrying about the bottom section here because I'm, it's the black part of the texture that I'm going to be using. Press the Alt key to bake it down. Remember, Mari, if you're using it, always remember to press the Alt key. Because if you move your model without baking it, you're going to move your texture around. It's just in the paint buffer until you press the Alt key. And press the Alt key to bake it down. You may think that that's annoying, but uh, it can have its uses. Some, if you, if, you know, if you're working on some 
a model where you're not sure where you want to place the texture, then it's a good way to uh, move it around before you actually bake it. You can set up Mari to auto bake for you if you prefer. I just like uh, doing it manually, having a bit more control. It's just the same reason I um, don't get Max when I do a render to texture to create a material for me automatically. I like to do it by hand. And bake that down. Rotate that around a bit and finish off this end. Okay, let's also throw that texture down. Um, let's do it here at the bottom, but let's rotate it 180 degrees. So we'll zoom in on our model. Now I'm noticing here that this texture, there's a bit of an error here. Before I paint down, um, I'll paint this down, but then I'll have to go back and correct, correct that line that's appearing here. So it'll be a good opportunity to see how to fix an area like that up anyway. That's probably happened because it's, um, it we've accidentally overpainted an area by mistake when we've been doing our projection painting. Paint that in. You can't see it now, but when we change our layer style, it'll probably pop back into view again. So. Bake it down. Any of you guys watch Westworld at all? I watched the season premiere uh, final last night. It was really good. Okay. We'll bake that down. Those creepy Android robot things. Bake that down. We'll zoom out and jump around to the opposite side. Let's throw, let's do this underside through here. Okay, texture's in the right, in the right orientation. I'm just going to angle the model again slightly. I'm also going to scale the texture down just a little bit. Rotate that around. Bake it down with the Alt key. Always rotating the model so we're facing directly onto it. Not at an angle like that. You don't want to be painting on an angle. Always directly on. That's an any 3D program. You don't want to paint at an angle. You'll get te texture stretching otherwise. Any 3D paint program that is. You need to bend to watch it, Galen. Yeah. It is, it's really good, worth watching. A lot of nudity, but you know. It is, it's a good show. Interesting script, story. Story is really interesting. Bake that down. I think that and The Walking Dead are the two shows I try and watch religiously when I get time to watch TV. Bake that down. Okay, we'll bake that down. And that little bit there on the end. Let's also throw that on on this lower edge here, I think. So we'll rotate it around 180 degrees.
Now, I know I sound like a broken record, but always make sure you rotate the texture to follow the model. Otherwise, it's not going to look right. It'll look odd. I know it can be a pain having to, to, to rotate textures constantly, but it's important. Okay, we'll bake that down. And again, it's the black part of the texture I'm more concerned with, not the white. So if I'm missing areas here like this, I don't care because it's the black part I'm more worried about. We'll bake that down. Rotate that model around so we're looking directly at it, not at an angle. Rotate our texture to match our model. And bake it down. All right, let's um, change our layer style on this one. And I think we'll go with a multiply. And again, we're going to pull it back. And again, it will look darker in Max than it does in Mari because of the gamma difference. So just bear that in mind. So I'm going to go slightly lighter here in Mari because I know it'll show up darker in Max. All right, let's throw down a new layer and do a general dirt layer now. Uh, so let's find a texture that will be good just to throw down an overall dirty look. Um, This one might work. I'm going to jump to the top viewport here. I'm going to turn masking off now because I want the texture to flow ac across all angles of the model. Uh, jump to the top pretty much straight down. We're on a new layer. I'm just going to paint across that completely. Again, with this, these dirt layers, you don't have to be too precious. You just got to make sure that they blend together with each other when you're moving the texture around. You don't want to have any lines appearing in the um, in the in, in the texture itself. So just blend them together with each other if you're moving it around, as you move it around. We'll bake that down by hitting the Alt key. I'm just going to move that out of the way and go to probably a multiply again. And I'm going to pull it right back. That's with no texture and we're just going to pull it in until it starts to look a little dirty like that. Just subtle, nothing too dramatic. Now I'm going to zoom in a bit on the model here and angle it like that. I want to see that side piece and this bottom piece. I'm going to move my texture into place, scale it up a little bit. I'm going to go into my um, brush editor here and I'm going to increase my brush size a little bit. You could also change the, um, the opacity a bit here if you wanted to. Not necessary, but you could. Um, I'm going to go back into my layers. I'm going to throw down a new layer. I don't have to, um, but I think I just want to keep this separate. I could have used the same layer we used for the top, but I may want to dial it uh, in a little darker through the edges here. So putting it on a new layer will just help me have a bit more control. I'm going to pop that down to about halfway. I'm just going to paint in here and there. Bake that down by hitting the Alt key. And I want to pull it back just a bit. It looks just a bit too dark, so maybe something like like that. So just a hint of dirt here and there. I'm going to stay on the same layer now with the same settings. I'm going to angle it up. And again, I'm just going to paint just here and there. I'm not painting all over. I'm just hitting the mouse, uh, 
either the mouse or the, if you're using a tablet, just uh, hit the pen here and there. I don't want a line to appear like that though, so I'm going to paint that out. Now I'm going to swing around to the opposite side. And again, I'm just going to paint over it here and there. Don't go nuts with this. If you go overboard, it'll start to look a bit odd. Just pop a few in here and there. All right. Let's uh, take this out of Mari and bring it into Max and have a look. So I'm just going to save my project. I'm going to go into my channel, color channel, and uh, go export flattened and export everything flattened. We're in our rework folder. I'm just going to pop a star in so I can see it all. And it's called Bannister Large TGA. That was the one that we um, rendered to texture. We'll use that and we'll save over that one. So export. Yes, I want to overwrite. Okay, let's jump back into Max. It's gone white because it's realized that we've uh, changed the texture. So just open your material editor. Select the texture that we just saved out and hit reload. <laughs> I haven't got the right one selected. I didn't realize. See, the, the dotted line indicates I'm on that texture. I want this one here. We'll reload that. Okay. Let me just jump out a little. Now I've no, I'm noticing a difference here and that difference I think is the white line, that white dirt mark that we have running along the uh, opposite textures. We're going to have to add that here to this back section. Easy enough to fix. We'll just jump back into Mari. Throw down a new layer. And it's this back, it's the top section at the back here that we're looking at, that one, that round one there. Just going to pull my brush back down again because I'm not doing dirt now. Now we're on a new layer. We're going to go back into our image manager and grab um, the texture we can use for that white mark. This one will work okay. We're going to rotate it 180 degrees. Again, I'm going to go back into projection and turn um, masking on. And again, it's this top edge here we want to uh, paint up. So. Scale it up a bit. Paint it in. Bake it down with the Alt key. Again, I move the model by hitting the uh, holding the Alt key and the middle mouse button. I rotate it by holding the Alt key and the left mouse button. And I scale it by holding the Alt key and the right mouse button. Okay, we'll bake that down with the Alt key. And again, I rotate it by holding down the Control key and the right mouse button. Sorry, not the control key, the um, shift key. Stop that. No, it, it is the control key, but it's the left mouse button. My apologies. Don't know my left from my right. Bake it down with the alt key. Bake it down, rotate our model so we're looking at it front on and finish that end off. Okay, we'll bake that down. Before I 
pull it back into max. I may run that. Um, no, we'll take it back into max here. Let's just change the layer style to an add. And again, we're going to pull it back. And again, go into our channel and our color channel and export everything flattened. And again, we're just going to overwrite our banister large.tga there. And again, we'll save our file just to be safe. Jump back into Max. Relay that texture again. Okay. And that's better. It matches up much, much more naturally now. So now we have all of our banister our borders textured up. All you have to do is start softening up the edges of them. So let's do that right now. Let's select one of them. We'll go into isolation mode so we can see it a little bit more easily. I'm going to collapse the stack here. I'm not going to work on the original edit poly. I'm going to put a new edit poly on the stack. I'm going to go into edge mode here. And now let's start selecting some edges. Um, just wondering whether selecting everything and um, deselecting would be better or not. Probably not. We'll select the ones that we want to soften up. And I do that by selecting one and then just hitting the uh, loop key here to get it to run all the way along the edge. I don't want to do it to these inner edges. I only want to do it on the outer edges. Loop. I'm going to do the um, horizontal ones first and then we'll come back and do the vertical ones. If you find it hard to, to select the edge, you can always turn on um, wireframe. But because this model is quite basic, I don't need to do that. It should be fine. Easy enough to find the edge here. Uh, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do this bottom piece. I'm just going to think. I am, I am going to do this bottom piece here on the outside section that overhangs the um, terrace itself. I'm going to do that very bottom edge there. So that, that's that side. Let's look at this side now. I'm going to select that and loop it. Select that and loop it. Uh, also that one there and loop it. This one here and loop it. Not the inner edge, just these outer edges and loop them. I'm going to do this edge here. I'm not going to do this edge here because this edge is actually um, resting on the tiled ground. Okay, so they're all of our horizontal edges. Let's start doing our vertical edges now. We'll work from the top and work our way down. So we want that one there and that one there and that top edge there and this top edge here. The same on this side. That edge, that edge, that one and that one. That one, that one. We do want that one there and we do want this one down here as well as the uh, very edges here and here. We want that edge, that edge, that edge. I'm going to come in in a minute and um, probably remove this one just here. Before that though, I'm going to do that edge, that edge, these two corner pieces here and here, 
as well as the bottom piece here, that corner piece there, and here, as well as the top, not the bottom edge though. Let's swing around to this side. And we're going to do that one, that one, that edge, that edge, that one, that one, this one, this one, and this one, as well as that bottom edge there, and there, and there. Uh, that edge there, 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 and there. We do want the top here and that corner. We don't want the bottom, but we do want that corner. And that corner and that corner. We also want that edge through here. Okay, now I'm just looking at the model to see if there are any edges that I've uh, missed. We want that edge there. And this inside edge here. We don't want the corners in here though. Now again, we want that edge there. <coughs> Pardon me. We don't want these inside corners. We do want that edge just there. And there. And there. And there. <coughs> I don't actually want that edge there, so I'm going to deselect that. We do want that corner through here though. And again, I'm just um, looking over the model to make sure I have all of my edges selected. We don't want this edge down here. Uh, actually, no, we do. That's at the front. Sorry, my mistake. But we don't want these ones through here. Let's have a look at uh, this now with a modifier on top. So I'm not going to actually use the edit poly modifier. I'm going to throw a separate one <coughs> on top of it. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm going to pull it back. I'm going to go up to about four segments and just pull that back a little bit. And now just play with the amount until it looks uh, a bit more natural. And the tension as well. Let's just softened up those edges and made them look a bit more worn and a bit more um, natural because you won't have any hard edges in a model like this. All right, let's select those two modifiers. I'm going to copy them. I'm going to uh, exit isolation mode. I'm going to select this one here. Again, I'm going to collapse the stack. I'm going to, um, I could paste instance, which would mean if I change the first one, it will change for all of them. But I'm not going to change the first one, so I'm just going to do a regular paste. 
select the next one. I'm going to keep going around the outside now to copy that work to all of those versions. And that will just save us a lot of work having to do it all by hand individually. And that's the, the great thing about Max's um, stack here, being able to copy and paste between geometry. You can only do it if the geometry is identical. So that large section we were just texturing up at the back here, I won't be able to do that because the geometry is different. I'll have to do that one by hand separately. The same with these uh, inner, inner ones and the straight pieces. But these smaller sections certainly. You don't have to collapse the stack, it just makes things a bit neater. You don't have a huge stack, a modifier, a list of mo in your modifier stack. Yeah, no, I don't want to collapse too, I want to collapse all. And again, this, this large section, I won't be able to, to do that because uh, this different geometry, I'll have to do this one by hand separately. So we'll just continue. We'll miss that one out for now and we'll continue around. Okay, paste. Collapse the stack. And that was the reason I created an edit poly on top and didn't use the base edit poly because that way I could copy it and paste it between the um, pieces of geometry. Collapse all. And paste. Uh, collapse all. Paste. It may seem tedious, but believe me, it's a lot uh, quicker than doing it all individually by hand. And like I said, if you thought, if you think later on that you may want to change that uh, bevel slightly, instead of doing a straight paste, then do a paste instance, and that way, the, the when you change the first one, you'll change all of them at the same time. This one here. All right. And again, though, we're going to have to do these straight ones and these uh, inner curved pieces separately. So this straight one we can copy across to this straight one, and one of these we can copy to the other three, and then we have to do the one at the back. But it's just, like I said, help to soften up those edges as you can see the difference between that one and this one here. Just makes it look a bit more natural, a bit more worn, not like it's come off a production line and been chiseled to an angle within an inch of its life. Because that's not natural, that, that hard edge is not natural. You want to soften up all your edges. It's something people can forget to do. Uh, even I, I've forgotten occasionally to do it myself. It's particularly when you, you're not doing everything at once on one piece of geometry and you're working on a whole model. It can be easy sometimes to forget that you've, um, you haven't softened up an edge like that. And it does, like I said, look a lot more natural. So you always want to make sure you do it. Because you will notice that even when you're rendering from a distance like this, the light will fall differently across the top of the, um, the model than it will on a hard edge. 
your normal maps as well. They'll look a lot better on a soft edge. But we've got everything on the top textured up. We've just got to camp, uh, soften up the edges on a few more pieces of geometry and then we can start working on these lower supports and columns. Once we've done that, we're almost done apart from bringing in the new statues for the top and growing the ivy, flowering ivy, before we um, do an export and bring it into view to do some beauty renders. So let's just take a bit of a pan around the outside here and have a look. Now there are some sections of the geometry that we do need to correct like here where we're these supports are out too too far into the to the base here. Once we've textured everything up, we will go around the model and correct any of those small areas. They're just required to be moved out a bit probably for that one. I noticed at the front as well some of these columns here I want to make a slight alteration. I want to bring them forward so that they intersect these two borders here and make them a little larger. But again, once we've textured it up, we can then get a good overall look at the model and move any, and correct any small pieces that we think uh, don't look quite right. Again, in here, you'll notice this column is um, too far down. It's it's actually sitting through the tile floor. It, it'll need to be brought up. The small things like that. But again, we'll wait till the model's completely finished, textured, and uh, before we do the export, we'll make any of those small corrections. But aside from that, I think our model is starting to come together. Again, like I said, I'm bringing in another two angel statues for here and um, and here because I just think it looks a bit empty on these two ends here. You wouldn't have to necessarily have two more statues. Like I said, you could have um, seating stone benches or something if you wanted. You could have uh, urns, large urns. It just needs something because it looks a bit empty, I think, on these end pieces. I'm going to save our model. I'll just, I will show you the model that I'm going to bring in the angel statue I've created for those two end pieces. Once Max has saved this one out. Because I have already created them, so I know, um, what they're going to look like. And I wanted to create a model that would be pointing towards that uh, metal dome, that iron ironwork dome there. And that'll also help to draw people's eye when you do a render and you, you've got a still image. It'll help draw people's eye up to this dome. Okay, well, Max has saved that out. I'll show you the model I'm going to be bringing in once we're finished doing a, a bit more of the texturing. So this one just here. So we have our angels here that are holding the lights on either side of the entrance. And then we're going to have uh, two more angels that will be standing up here on the top pieces. And it'll be this angel here. And she's pointing up towards the dome. So we'll bring her in. We'll have one on either side. It, uh, I'll probably end up um, mirroring that model for the other side. And they'll be pointing up toward the dome. So, yes. I just thought I'd give you a sneak peek of what, uh, what the statue will be that we'll be placing up there. I'm actually uh, leave it there for today, guys. Um, Thank you guys for watching. Um, thank you for following my Twitch channel. I really do appreciate it every time you guys follow me on Twitch. Um, I will be back on again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the U.S. Uh, if you're not sure of when I'm streaming, I always post to my Twitter account 15 minutes before I'm about to go live, so you can keep an eye on my Twitter page at PhilDoes3D. Um, <clears throat> Thank you. Like I said, thank you guys for watching. Um, I will be back on again tomorrow. Uh, hopefully I'll see you guys then. Thank you guys for, for chatting to me. And thanks, Galen, for popping into chat. I appreciate it. It's always nice to chat to you guys. Um, 
yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care.